Hello everyone and welcome to the channel and here is my follow-up video about Android 14 QPR1 Beta 1. In this video I'm gonna share with you the features I missed to mention in my previous episode. I will share my experience about the performance, stability and bugs of this build and finally I will show you how to activate the new floating system-wide search if you don't know how to do it on your own. So without further ado, let's jump in. The first change we have is under the hotspot settings. And now when you go to the speed and compatibility page, you will find more than one option. The first one is for the dual band hotspot that supports 2.4 and 5 gigahertz connections. And the second one is 6 gigahertz, but it's grayed out on my 7 Pro saying here, not available in your country or region. And it doesn't mention in what regions this feature is available. So if you have any idea, please let me know in the comments below. Change number two is under the wallpaper and the style app. And now when you try to change the wallpaper colors, you will see this new animation, similar to the one you get when you create a new cinematic wallpaper. The quick settings also got a small visual tweak. Now when you go to the edit mode and scroll all the way down until you reach the hold and the drag to add tiles, you will see that this section is now using a lighter background. And when you compare it side by side with the stable version, you can see the difference more clearly. Under the developer options, there is a new toggle called show key presses. And once you activate this toggle, every time you press any of the physical keys, you will get this visual feedback at the bottom right corner, which might be useful for the developers. Now let's talk about the new floating system wide search before showing you how you can activate it using an ADB command. And the first thing I noticed when you tap and hold on it and then release your finger, it will give you the ability to paste whatever you have in your clipboard, which never been the case before. So here's the stable version on my Pixel 6 Pro. And when I tap and hold on the search bar, nothing happens. And also you get a nice haptic feedback when you do this new gesture. And I also spotted a bug after activating the new floating system wide search that you need to be aware of before activating yours. Every time I open a folder and then tap anywhere to close it, it will trigger the system wide search for some reason. And lastly, the feature might disappear on its own after updating your system apps using Google Play Store. I'm not sure which app exactly behind this behavior, but you might need to reapply the ADB command every time it disappears. Now let me show you how to activate this new feature if you don't know how to use ADB commands. All you need to do is to go to settings and scroll all the way down, then go to about phone and keep tapping on your build number until it says that developer options are already available. And then you go to system and then developer options, scroll down a bit and make sure that USB debugging is activated. And let's plug the phone to the PC to continue with the steps. Now let's prepare the PC to be able to do this. The first step is to download the SDK platform tools using the link in the description below. You will find one for Windows, Mac, and Linux. In my case, I use Windows, so let's click on the hyperlink. In the pop-up window, scroll all the way down, agree to the terms, and click the download button. If you didn't get the option to choose the location, Windows will automatically save the file to the downloads folder. Once it finishes the download, navigate to the folder, and you will find a zip file called the platform tools. Right click on it and choose extract all. Windows will automatically unzip the file in the same location. Open the extracted folder until you reach the list of files and at the top bar type CMD and hit enter to get this black box. Now it's time to plug the phone to the PC using a USB cable, then expand your notifications shade and tap on the one that says charging this device via USB. From this menu choose file transfer slash Android Auto. Now the phone is ready, back to the PC to apply the commands which you will find in the description below. Start by copying command 1 and paste it in the black window and hit enter. If you didn't get any messages that means that everything is fine, but if this is your first time to do this, you might get a pop-up on your phone's screen to allow access to the PC, which you need to do first and then apply the command again. Now let's copy the second command to the black window and hit enter and you are good to go. Now let's talk about my experience with this build in terms of performance and stability. In my case, everything is working flawlessly without any slowdowns or issues. All the animations are solid, no problems. So in my case, everything went fine. And when it comes to the bugs, I didn't face any major bugs that stopped me from using the Pixel 7 Pro normally. 
And when it comes to Google Wallet, it works perfectly well. And I made some purchases, as you see over here on the 25th and the 24th of September without any problems. But your experience might vary based on which model you're using. But in my case, everything went great. And when it comes to the battery life, it's about the same as Android 14 Beta 5.3. I'm getting five hours of screen on time when I use the phone mainly on cellular data and the rest of the day on Wi-Fi. But when it comes to Wi-Fi only, I get slightly more than 6.5 hours, which is not bad. So that's pretty much it for today. That was my experience with Android 14 QPR1 Beta 1 after using this build for some time. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.